Hi guys! We have been in Tuscany in Italy now for around a month. On Sunday we leave back for Denmark. I'm going to put these guys on an airplane from Pisa and I'm going to drive back. So we just wanted to share a few of the things that we learned on the first trip with the camper. And one of the things that I was worried about was Max's sleep time. I was afraid that Max would maybe wake up at night when we put him to sleep and we started talking right next to him in the next room, but that hasn't been an issue at all. He sleeps well and that has been very, very nice. Yeah, that's been a better than we expected. Yeah. And then the second thing we've learned is that it definitely works out better for us and our preferences to stay in campsites close to the city. We haven't stayed that many places yet, but when we're staying close to the city, it's very easy for us to just drive downtown and park somewhere and just go in there for a few hours. If we stayed further away, it would be like a whole day deal. And that's not always possible for us because we still have to work and there's Max's nap time and all that stuff. So staying close to a city where we can get to our destination within 15 minutes is really beneficial to us. So it's worth the extra cash that it costs to stay here. Sure. And normally, the closer we get to the city, the better the broadband will be. We need a landline that we, where they can shoot out a good Wi-Fi signal. And that's definitely something you cannot really look up online beforehand. I mean, just before we came to this last campground, we went past two other campgrounds and we just had to... We, we couldn't do it because the Wi-Fi was so bad. In Europe, they show if they have a Wi-Fi zone or mm. if they have Wi-Fi everywhere. But that will mean it's up to maybe 80% and it doesn't say necessarily how fast it is. Yeah. of the upload and the download speed so of course for us it needs to be good because we need to upload video files and we also i need to be able to work so for this campground it was super nice and normally of course near the, the nearer the city you get the better the signal will be one of the campgrounds that we pulled into didn't even have our data coverage on our phones so yeah. that was just that <laughs> like that's what we usually use as our backup so yeah. if our backup didn't even work yeah, we yeah, couldn't so even we just, make a phone call. So we, yeah. if you get very close to a lake or out in the countryside, especially in Italy maybe, I don't know if it's the same all over Europe, we'll let you guys know when we get to France in a month. But here in Italy, you, you need to check the broadband. Yeah, and then the fourth thing that we learned is that when Max wakes up in the morning, everybody wakes up. Everybody wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> because if you move around inside the camper, then uh, it starts kind of shaking and... Uh, yeah, if you go to bed, even if you just leave the camper and come back after six in the morning, at least with our schedule, Max wakes up. So, yeah, yeah everybody wakes up yeah. early. So we also go to bed early, which yeah. is all right. You just <laughs> yeah. need to adjust to it. Yeah, and then one thing that we found out is too that this setup that we have is that we mainly sleep and hang out inside, but we really built this setup to hang out outside. It's spring in Europe and mm. the weather can vary a lot. Yeah. So we've had the awning out and the table and for two, two and a half weeks, that was totally fine, but the past week it's been a little bit more cold. Like you, you can tell right now, and the sun windy. isn't up and the, it's windy. Yeah. So we have to pull the awning in so it doesn't fly away. And it's kind of cold to sit and eat outside with him especially. So that's something that we really need to figure out is somehow mm -hmm. to cram a seating area in there. Yeah. We need to be able to sit down and eat. So we need some sort of table. We'll work it out for the next trip, I think. Yeah. In correlation to that, the next point is that we have this uh, chair that we can mount on different tables and we thought that that would be ideal and it's worked out perfectly. It's the same that we yeah. use at home, but because the weather changes, if it does rain, it's just really a lot easier for us if it was plastic because it's mm. fabric and it gets wet. So we have yeah. to take it off, carry it inside during the night, or cover it or something. It's just not as practical. Or maybe see if we can pull off the fabric. Maybe it's nah. plastic inside, I don't know. Nah, it doesn't work, I've, I've tried that. <laughs> and the next thing, we need to get rid of cords. <laughs> yeah. I mean, charging cords and so on. So, so what I'm gonna do when we get home with the camper is to install all the little cords and wires into one of the upper cabinets. Yeah. So that's going to be a charge station for the laptops, for the phones, for the camera, for my Apple Watch. And we have so many cords laying around, and especially at night when we fold out the bed, everything moves over to the kitchen area, which is <laughs> kind of annoying in the morning before you can do anything, you need to get rid of at least five or 10 cords. Yeah. <laughs> then there are the baby alarms, yeah. also needs to get charged. So yes, we're definitely going to build 
a charging, charging station, station. <laughs> inside the upper cabinets. Exactly. And in our area, not in where Max sleeps, because then we have to disturb him and we don't want that. So yeah, we have to figure that one out. Okay, our number seven thing on the list is that camping like this is definitely good when you're traveling with kids. Because if you're single, whatever, stay downtown in Airbnbs, hotels, all that stuff is great. But when you have a kid, it's just so practical because you're on ground level. <laughs> you don't feel like you're disturbing a lot of people. A lot of other people have kids as well. You can have the strollers and stuff outside. In most campgrounds, we can park our car right next to our camper. So it's just really easy like this. And it's the same base for him all the time. Mm. He has the same bed, like the surroundings. The it's setup is the it's same his home. Ability when we're yeah. not at home in the apartment. And that is really, it's working out even better than I thought it would. Also some of the other families we talked to from all over Europe, they told us the same story that the kids love it because as soon as they roll up to the campground, the kids take off while mom and dad sets the base <laughs> and they immediately find somebody to play with. So mm -hmm. that's just yeah. a big plus going to a campsite because you, of course you wouldn't have that if you're in an Airbnb or in a hotel. And for the duration on a campground, we found that seven to 10 days works well for us. I think shorter period than that, if we go down to like four or five days, it's just setting up, packing down all the time. Yeah. And also after a little more than a week, we are kind of ready to see a new area. Yeah. We also have like within seven days, we usually have maybe three days where we go out to explore and we have four days just in the campground because yeah. we have to work and Max needs his downtime and we need to do the laundry and stuff like that. So less than a week in a location is just, it's a little... Out like, exploring one day, back one day, out exploring one day, back one day, so yeah. so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Depending on how long we have to travel, of course, but that worked real well. So those were the eight things that we learned on our first trip and hopefully we'll keep adding to this list and uh, we have many more things where we might do more videos yeah. like this. this These are our... uh, definitely some of the points we take with us from the first trip and some of the things we're going to change in the camper and yeah. around the camper. Exactly. Yep. So if you want to see more videos like this, just give us a thumbs up and maybe we'll, we'll link some more uh, like this video up here um, of other downsizing videos that we've done. And if you want to follow our travels, then we'll put a link up here to One Girl One Suitcase where we post our travel videos. They come up every Friday. So you get a little bit more like a personal <laughs> look yeah. into our travels. And uh, we love sharing with you guys. So see you guys next time. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs>